What's going on coders and welcome to episode 2 of our utility service playlist on the Google Apps Script course. In this video we're going to be talking about formatting and parsing. So there are a lot of times in your code that you'll need your data to be formatted or parsed a certain way in order for that code to execute successfully or just to enhance the user experience on the front end. And while you can dive into your code and do a lot of these things manually, there are certain problems that come up frequently enough that Google Apps Script has pre-built their own methods in order to assist you when those use cases arise. So the top three methods that I have chosen for today are format date, format string, and parse CSV. So let's dive into the code and see how these methods can assist you in your own code. In today's demonstration, I'm going to present to you an application that is extremely similar to something that I did in my own work. And for the confidentiality of the original software, I've changed around a couple of the things, but the main core functionality is still there. So if you're wondering how App Script, or in particular, these methods can be applied to a real life case scenario, then this is the video for you. So first things first, let's get an idea of the situation. So we would have candidates come on site for an interview and then we would create their name sign that looked, that looked a little bit something like this that would be basically printed out and then put in a little holder in front of the interview room that they were assigned to. So the name sign would look like this. It would have their name, it would have the time of their interview and it would have their interviewer. And again, this name sign would be basically uh, it would basically be a designation as to which interview room the candidate was supposed to enter for their interview. Well, we would get this data from a daily CSV. The CSV would look something like this. Every single row would be a new candidate and it would display their name, the interview time, and the interviewer, as well as some other data uh, in these fields as well, like interview location. Well, how we were doing it before was we would have a template like this and then we would copy all of this. We would go down to the next page. We would paste this on the next page. And then we would go back into our CSV. We'd look at the next candidate. This one is Dolores Eaton. And basically we would have to manually type all of that in uh, for every single candidate. Well, as you can already tell by the second candidate, if we had hundreds of candidates, this would take a lot of time. It'd be very time consuming and resource intensive, uh, re human resource intensive. So uh, one of the things that we did was we automated this process and how we did it is with app script. So let's go into our code editor and look at how we can do something like this. Well, first thing we need to do is create a trigger and this trigger is going to be for a Google document. Here it is right here. Let me just uh, delete all of that. And basically, whenever we open this document name signs, we are going to trigger this server side function, create custom menu bar. That function, all it does is it creates a menu and it adds an item to that menu. Uh, called generate name science and once that item is clicked it's going to run this server side function show name sign sidebar so this function right here is right here and it all it's going to do is it's going to now show a sidebar on this google document with the user, user interface composed by this html file name signs which i have right here so let's see that in action. Again, if we uh, refresh this page, here we go. Our, our, our menu item is going, to be, uh, is going to be created right here, custom functions. We're going to click now on generate name signs. And here is our sidebar right here. We have an H1, we have an input, and we have a button. Let's see that in the HTML file itself. Again, here it is right here. It's a very short HTML file. Uh, we're not gonna go over all of it, but as you can already see, here is the CSS. Here is our body. Again, all we have is an H1 tag, an input, and a button, as well as a paragraph tag right here. So once this button is clicked, we are going to run this function right here, this client side function. Basically, it's just going to read the file from uh from the input right here this input tag 
and it's going we're going to create a file reader and once that file has been read as text it's been loaded then we're going to run this client side function which is going to now call a Google script uh, server side function generate name signs if that's successful then we're going to display the prompt completed if it's failed if it's an error then we are going to display the prompt failed all right so we're again we're going to run this server side function once the once the button is clicked we're going to pass in whatever we read from this input field which is going to be our CSV and then we're going to pass it now back into this server side function generate name signs all right so what actually are we passing back well we're passing back the CSV but what does that actually look like well if you don't know let's go check it out right now here is our CSV file if we open that with a text edit or a text editor then this is all basically a CSV file is. It stands for comma separated values. So all it is is just a big stream, uh, a big stream, and it is separated now by commas. So this string has uh, um, uh, basically it has new line characters as well that separates the different uh, rows. But every single cell has its own uh, is 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 comma separated to specify uh, the different cells and to differentiate that from a different piece of data. So again, all this is just a big string. All right. Well, this isn't very helpful, right? Because we can't really access any of this data. It's not really. I mean, it's great for uh, file compression, but it's not really great for accessing data. So now we need to turn this into something more useful. So what we can do, what we can do is we can turn it into a two-dimensional array, and that is a lot easier for looping through that, for iterating through it, for accessing certain um, rows and columns uh, in or for accessing certain data that has a specific row and a specific column. So how we do that is we can use the pre-built method parse CSV. And what this is going to do, if we type it out, CSV, what this is going to do is it's going to take in a string input, which is uh, your CSV, and it's going to return for you a two-dimensional array. So that is exactly what we want and that is why we are using the parse CSV method. So then we're going to store that two dimensional array in a variable called parsed CSV. We're now going to get our document template. So again, let's go into, this is another, a different uh, Google document, but basically we're going to have these uh, placeholders. It's going to be first name, last name, interview time, and interviewer. And basically we're going to now loop through our parse CSV and for every single row, we are going to use this template to create a, um, a unique name sign. And here it is right here. We're going to basically replace the text first name with whatever is in the zero index or basically that is going to be uh, column A. And then for something like interview time, we're going to replace that with index two column, which is right here. That is column C. All right, and we're gonna do that for every single row or however many candidates that we have. So let me just run that function. I think it might make a little bit more sense if we run it in real time and so that you can see the result. So here we go, we're going to click on our custom functions, generate name signs. We're going to choose our file. Here it is, here's the interviews for today. If we hit open and we hit generate signs, it has completed and there we go, here are all of our name signs and it took a, it took seconds a lot quicker than if we were to do that manually and if we had hundreds of candidates that would again take seconds and it would save a whole lot of time great so that is awesome but as you can see as you can probably see right here it says your interview will be at and then it gives us uh, this date right here and that is what we received from the CSV but that is not necessarily what we want to display on our name sign, right? Um, this isn't very user friendly um, and it, it has GMT 0500. That doesn't really make too much sense to the candidate. So what we want is actually just to display the time. So that is where our next method comes in. That is going to be format date. So as you know, again, all we're doing is we're basically just uh, replacing interview time, that placeholder, with whatever is in uh, index two 
which is right here. So that's, again, this is a big ugly mess right here. We just want the time. So we're going to now create a new variable, say let interview time equal, we're going to say utilities dot format date. The format date method takes in three arguments. One is, the first one is a date object. The second one is a string for the time zone. And then finally, the format that we want to format this date uh, into, and that is going to be a string. So first things first, let's create our date object. It's going to be new date. We're going to pass in whatever we receive from the CSV, and that will make it into a date object. Then our time zone is going to be, since these are all in Eastern Standard Time, that is exactly what our time zone is going to be. Let's just say EST. Finally, we need a format, and the format is going to be uh, in a format that is similar to this. So I would re really recommend reading this uh, this um, HTML file right here. This is basically shows you all of the different character codes that you can use to format your date. Uh, some of them that we're going to use today are, for instance, this little lowercase h, and that is going to display the hour in a.m. or p.m., 1 through 12. If you want it in military time, you could display a k, but since we want it in just 1 through 12 time, that is what we're going to display, h. All right, let's go back into our code, and let's do that. So again, we want our hour, then we want a colon, and then we want uh, the minutes, uh, we want two of those minutes, and then we want a space, and then we want the character code A, which basically uh, which basically says the AM or PM, whether it's AM or PM. All right, so that is exactly what we want, and now we're going to copy this variable right here, and we're going to paste it instead of the uh, parse CSV uh, index two. We're going to now paste this variable. Alrighty, so if we save it now. And let me just refresh, actually let me get rid of all of this and refresh this page. This should work exactly how we want it to. All right, so we're gonna click on custom functions, generate name signs, like we did before. We're gonna choose the file. Here is our interview for today, our interviews for today. We're gonna open that and then we're going to click on generate signs. All right, there we go, it has now completed. So here we are, we, has, we have your interview will be at 3 p.m. That's exactly what we want. It's very user friendly. And if we go down to the next candidate, this one says 4 p.m. And this one says 5 p.m., exactly how we want it to be displayed. So again, that is extremely cool in my opinion. We just saved a whole lot of time, especially if there are hundreds of candidates coming in every single day. It just took seconds to do that, and we can use this code now every single day to display to make these name signs, and then we can print them out and put them in their in their little holders. That is pretty cool. All right, so the final uh, method that we have for today is is um, format string. So format string is a method that is very similar to sprintf in PHP. So if you know how this works then we basically have a string and we can format it. If you don't know how it works, then look at all of these, or look at all of these specifiers, this is going to help. But basically, let me just do it right here and just to give you an idea how this, uh, this method format string works. So I just created my own separate function for this method. Um, and basically, let's imagine that you have some kind of um, accounting app or something like that and you receive data such as like how much money you spent today and your overall account balance. Well, this data can come in uh, integers, say, right? It can just be 45. If you spent $45, it can just be 45. But let's say that you want to display your message as 45.00, right? That's how commonly you would display your, um, your dollar amount with the cents included. Well, we couldn't just do something like this where we have string interpolation and we say spent uh, today, that's not going to work because it's just going to show us the 45, right? And we want 45.00. So how, how we would do that is we would now specify, we would have to put a percent sign just like this. And then based on some of these character codes, these specifiers, we would say, I want it to be two decimals long and I want it to display as a float. And that is how you would write it. So if you wanted 45 to be displayed as 45.00, this is how you would write it. And I'm going to do that again for the account balance right here. I just want it to be two. 
I just want to be to the hundredths place and I want to display as a float. All right, so now let's use our method. We'll say utilities.formatString. And this takes in one required parameter and uh, however many arguments, additional arguments, uh, you want in the next parameter spots. So our template string is going to be right here, user message. And our user message contains two different uh, uh, things that we want formatted, right? We want the spent amount or the spent today and the account balance. So that is going to be what follows. We're going to say spent today. And then the third argument, we're going to have account balance. And basically what this is going to do, spent today is going to be placed in right here, wherever we have this percent sign. It's going to be formatted so that it has uh, only two decimal places and it's going to be a float. And then the next argument is going to go into the next place that we find a percent sign. And it's going to be formatted similarly. So let me just log or log this just to show you how this works. Let's open up our execution log and run this. And there we go. It says today you spent $45. Your current account balance is six two four three and 90 cents. And that is exactly what we wanted. This is now formatted as 45.00. And since we have, let's say a half cent right here, this is going to be rounded up so that we only are displaying two decimal points. So that is pretty dang cool. And that is how I would use a method such as format string. All right, guys, I hope this uh, video was helpful to you. I know it was kind of long, but uh, feel free to replay it and, uh, and catch up on anything that didn't really make sense. You can always post your comment down below and questions down below. Plus, I'll be adding this code to my GitHub. You can check it out there for further reference. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And I'll see you in the very next episode.